Thanks, Alex, for the lengthy introduction and leaving me 20 minutes for the demo. Um, <laughs> as you know, so hi, I'm to those of, uh, of you who do not know me, I'm Yoni, I'm the CDO of Controller, and uh, I'm, I have the pleasure to have Eugene, our VP product, with us here again. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces, but some new ones, which is great. Um, so again, thanks for coming. Uh, Thanks for being a part of the EWC community. I think it's a great uh, community and we have been sponsoring for, what, three, four years now? I know you have more than And uh, you can see Hong Kong, I'm not sure, but definitely Berlin and the other ones. Uh, right, so alcohol, that's a funny story actually. We purchased um, <laughs> something like 50 small bottles in Israel before we came here. And today when I, uh, when I was preparing to come here, uh, I saw three, uh, only have two left. <laughs> <laughs> So, one goes, two, three's are because she has a birthday. Yeah. Um, and the other one, um, congrats on everything. I know, that's what I need to do. Thank you. That's to have something to inspire on after the... Uh, and baby definitely wants it too, I think. Yes. Yeah. Celebrate the birth after. Indeed, indeed. So, but we do have a few things, right? If, uh, as usual, when any question from the audience, any note, any... Uh, any feedback whatsoever, we have uh, some chocolates, we have uh, t-shirts, we can give them away, we'll give them obviously during the show, um, and obviously some uh, uh, glass shots, right, so, okay, so uh, what we'll do today, it's a bit different from uh, what we've done so far, uh, we'll show you obviously a live demo of the new version, uh, something quick, probably like 10 minutes, because I think most of you know uh, the essence. And we'll also show for the first time a brand new product we are working on, uh, Control Up Insights. I think you'll find it interesting and uh, we'll definitely love to get your feedback on that. Okay, so without further ado, uh, next slide. Yeah. Okay, so this uh, agenda, as I mentioned, we can just skip to the next slide. Uh, so 2015 was a great year for us, okay, as, as uh, the other ones actually. Um, so we have actually released 4.1, this is our latest uh, published uh, uh, release back in January. And uh, probably the best uh, version ever. Uh, new log and duration monitoring metrics and mobile alerts. And you will see everything uh, during the live demo in like a minute or two. Okay, so we'll not uh, expand on that too much. Uh, we're starting to see some very large customers coming in, which is great for us. Um, uh, a few examples are on the slide right here. So we closed uh, Fidelity in the UK, which is crazy bunch of Zendesk of VMs and Axelon. You might have seen them in the Innovation Awards at Synergy. They are a gigantic Zen app shop. And uh, hopefully we'll see more and more big names coming up. Uh, we actually crossed, I think, the 400 customers mark this year. So it's uh, picking up and uh, yeah. And hopefully with these conferences and, and Synergy, uh, we'll see much more. Um, May, obviously, just yesterday actually, the reason my voice is a bit, uh, um, you know, not that clear is because I did something like 100 demos straight to the audience. Uh, it was probably the best synergy ever. Yeah. And um, the great thing was, it's, you know, not only uh, guys just walking in the expo, but, but guys were coming and saying, someone told me I have to be here and see what you guys are doing. I heard it's great. Uh, and resellers bringing in their, their friends and, and customers bringing in the, their uh, colleagues. So really great event. I think Citrix uh, uh, did a great show this year. And yeah, hopefully they'll bring back the, the European conference. Anyone want Synergy in Europe again? Is that a rumor? Yeah. yeah. He's starting our show. It's totally starting a rumor. We don't know anything about it. Synergy is back. Yeah. 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 Or maybe no, another, let's not get synergy into this. Thing, um, <laughs> yeah. I think part of the, the pressure was during the EDVC is we kept telling Prime we want uh, some more significant, especially U.S. Citrix user groups. Uh, as a sponsor, we, you know, we keep looking for ways to interact with the audience. And user groups are probably the best way, like you know, 100 guys, 200 guys, just speaking with them face to face and, and hopefully it will pick up soon. Okay, so for one, uh, we'll show you a quick demo. Uh, I think most of you have seen Control Up, so I'll maybe do like a brief overview of the main features, and then I'm going to show you some of the, the new things. Uh, hopefully, the demo gods will uh, will spare us. 
Uh, I know Mark P had some issues, but hopefully this room will be uh, a bit script. more. <laughs> bit some more stay luck. on script. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to stay on script. Okay, so we can uh, jump to the yeah the product. Right. So this probably looks familiar to some of you. This is our main console running on any Windows endpoint or published on a Zen app or Zen desktop uh, infrastructure. Um, up until now, at least, we were mainly about real-time dashboards and uh, management. Okay, so everything is in your face, real-time metrics, uh, CPU, memory, I.O. Um, starting to add some user experience metrics as well to get the full picture. Um, drilling down from the host there. Actually, in the, in the last EWC event, we showed Controller 4 for the first time. That's where we introduced uh, the hypervisor support. So we added uh, uh, vSphere and Zen server, which I know Alex uh, is really fond of. Uh, we will work on Hyper-V support, it's, it's picking up, so it will be there also. Um, actually, Zen server from an integration point of view was excellent. So Ray. Yeah, David? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the RD concept and everything, really great, so keep it up. Um, right, so 4.1. Um, you know, just before 4.1, just a quick uh, uh, orientation here, what we're seeing on the left side. This is obviously where we manage the objects. We have the hypervisors, so again, VMware and, and Zen server. And the other folders are where the Windows workloads are located. So we support everything from XP to 25R2. Although Microsoft dumped uh, 2003 and XP, it's still out there in many customer sites. Uh, also Zen F5, which is end of life or forever, but it's here. Um, Zen F65 still, you no, know, to me it seems like the most popular pl platform out there. Uh, and uh, really thank you Citrix for extending support for 2017, that's great. Um, and obviously we support all the newer versions, and uh, also Horizon View. Anyone using Horizon View? Yay! <laughs> 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 so one guy. Five, two, six, six, one. <laughs> yeah. And everything is in one console. So if you want side by side comparisons or analysis. Yeah, indeed. We were actually seeing a lot of customers using this to manage both the Zen App 6.5 existing farm and kind of supervising the migration to 7.6. You know, seeing how the workloads. The workloads just you know, migrate to the new versions and watching out the performance and everything. Um, now, in 4.1 we introduced uh, uh, quite a few new features. Uh, the main one is probably log on duration. And uh, the concept here is to start and add more and more user experience metrics. Right? Because CPU memory and I is important, but eventually they not necessarily indicate what the end user experience is. Right? In the end, the main job of most of us is to make sure users are happy. Right? If Citrix will work well, or VMware for that matter, then the project is successful. No one cares about just uh, low CPU or I.O. or whatever. So the main thing we added before one was a bunch of log and duration metrics. Um, what you're seeing here, this is the, the sessions view. Right? So this is the flat list for the ICA, HDX, uh, PC over IP or IDP sessions you have on your managed environment. Uh, we are showing quite a few metrics, as I mentioned. Uh, the log and duration, this is a new edition before one. So this metric here, this is actually covering the entire log and duration phase. Um, we're currently not looking on the, on the Citrix side of things. We are concentrating on the actual Windows log on process. So, yeah, Jim? So, log on is weird, right? Because there's a whole lot of processes happen after you get into Windows. Indeed. So, what, what is the <laughs> cut on? <laughs> 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 and he also gets the right to, for me, buy me a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Two for you because I know you. This is one we can't do. Jim, 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 did yeah. you, Jim, did you notice they have other two? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, more about it in a sec. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of stuff that happens after logons are officially finished, right? Indeed. So what's your cutoff point for... How you decide that's, where that's an excellent question. I actually spend a lot of time, and Helge is obviously mm -hmm. uh, aware of this, I guess. It's really complex. So mm -hmm. let's start with, uh, with how do we, we begin to measure, because it's easier. So we begin when the user is successfully authenticated on the endpoint. Again, this could be a Zendesk or VDA or an RDS server. And the reason we start with uh, the successful authentication event is because at some environments, the Windows prompt can sit there. Think about a, a physical Windows 7 box, right? It's booting up. And it's showing you the UI, the, the login UI, right? Waiting for credentials. So if you start measuring there, or when the session was created, this could be really biased, right? Because uh, someone can go make a coffee and only after that come back and log in. 
So we're actually starting when the credentials were inputted. When you click on OK, and usually at that second, the user is successfully authenticated. And that's where we start. Uh, when we finish, that's a great question. So we, we decide the, the login duration is, is over. Um, it actually depends on the type of the session. If it's a published desktop, then we are actually, uh, we are actually hooked into the, some of the Explorer shell messages. And we wait for Windows to tell us that the Explorer shell is fully initialized. Okay, and that's, that was the, the, the hard part. So we know exactly when Windows is saying, I'm, I'm ready, you can click on the start menu and it will actually give you feedback. Okay, for a published app, uh, uh, it's a bit different. For a published app, we actually wait for the published executable to be launched. And then we say, okay, the login process has, has ended. All right, so from the end user perspective, let's say it's Outlook, when you see the splash screen, that's what we'll say the login is, is, is over. Okay, it makes sense? Yeah. yeah? Alright, so you're also... I don't have ginger ale. I don't hold much ginger ale. Okay, but uh, with the uh, with chocolate inside, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, are you also looking at the group policy processing inside of that? Yeah, and for if sure. If you are, yep. then what about the, the Windows 8? It's very policy load type, right? Yeah. But Windows 8, 8.1, Parts of the group policy by default won't even start until five Indeed. minutes. Indeed. That's the login screen. Yeah. yeah. But that, that's actually, you know, to, I'll show you the slides. So tomorrow I'm doing a deep dive on the Windows login process, and I will answer all of these questions. In, it's actually a community session, so not about controller, but how to, to use built in Windows tool to see that. But for your question, so first, yeah, we do break down the login process to obviously user profile. This is the actual Windows user profile, not UPM. Uh, we show the group policy load time, and these are only the policies which are part of the actual login process. Okay, so this is what's the, only the policies that delay the Windows login process. This is the time you see here. Okay, desktop load time, this is the actual shell load time, desktop initialization. If it's a published app, you will see NA in the desktop load time. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's right, we have the other column, right? So the other column, it's basically uh, a very simple mathematical process. We're just taking the entire login duration and we kind of, you know, uh, uh, subtracting the profile group policy and desktop load time, and this is what, what's remained, okay? <laughs> now, since we released that, lots of customers said, hey, that, uh, you know, the main thing which is delaying my login process is the other. <laughs> what is the other? You know, what's going on there, man? Um, so we are working on this. I'll show some more about this uh, um, tomorrow, uh, but it's, it's also related to, uh, to something I want to show you in, in two minutes, okay? So keep that in mind. Yeah? Uh, is there a possibility to integrate with uh, third-party uh, products? Uh, oh, yes, absence, oh, I guess. I'm not yeah. naming any names. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, actually it's... Um, <laughs> Let's say absence. <laughs> Uh, definitely, it's, again, it's a work in progress, right? So we, we keep adding uh, uh, things we'll directly monitor. Uh, but, but, you know, keep this in mind and like in a few minutes I'll show you something we're working on and how we're going to kind of expand the things which is hiding be behind the login duration other cut. Okay? So these are the metrics. Now, um, another great thing we, we added to 4.1, and I think this is... Yanni, yeah, sorry. Sorry, in, in terms of login duration, the duration is very hard to like do like a red, amber, green thing. Yeah. You know, I'm quite, to me, if I'm, if I really optimize the login process and I can do 10 second logons. Indeed. Um, you know, a 12 second logon might be red, right? But for other people, 12 second logon might be green. Can you configure that threshold to you? Yeah, that, that's a great question. <laughs> okay, so two shots. Um, <laughs> so first, yes, you can change the default red and yellow thresholds. By default, you know, uh, I as a consultant, you know, I used to be a consultant back in the day, so I kind of decided to hard code uh, 30 seconds as the yellow threshold and 60 seconds as the red threshold because I think more than a minute is a horrible experience. Obviously, you can change that. Okay. It's not and a hard code, it's just a default. Yeah, yeah, it's the default. Right? Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, sorry. So you can, you can change it. No more shots. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can you just, just finish the, the answer. So, yeah, you can definitely change the defaults and set them. Again, bear this in mind because when we get to the insights part, you'll see something interesting about that. Okay? So, why don't you do something a little bit more interesting than that, right? Instead of, because users or even admins 
don't necessarily know when what level of alert is good to set, right? Indeed. So if you did something like meaningless one standard deviation of past sorry, low on durations, that would be a clever way to do the that's exactly what we were about. Bear with us till the oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, by the way, I haven't said it in the beginning, but one of the reasons we, we go to the user groups and EWBC is to get feedback. And I would say at least 50% of our roadmap is based on customer feedback. So keep the it coming. Right? is based on your feedback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. OK, so another thing we added to 4.1 is real-time alerts. OK, and this is pretty cool. I want to show you a live demo. I hope it will work. OK, so. Uh, Keep your finger crossed. Uh, I actually, you know, before before you launch the, the actual desktop, maybe we'll show them the trigger. But you can log on for you know, just to web interface. Um, so we actually added a feature that enables you to get real-time alerts directly to your iPhone or Android devices whenever something bad happens. Okay. So I think it's great because it kind of allows you to give uh, immediate feedback to users. Today, everyone is, you know, no one is patient anymore, right? Everyone's, everyone wants to be notified immediately. They want service immediately. So the main thing we, we thought about was how to, to keep admins um, alerted when, when, you know, when something goes bad, which is a bit uh, why, why I called this uh, presentation, you know, uh, keep an eye on the UX metrics before things uh, are starting to, to be ranked, right? So this is one of the incident triggers I've configured in my environment. This is a feature which allows you to tell control up one of the important events you want to uh, be notified on. And you can see here, Eugene is, is great, thanks. So this is a simple, uh, simple incident trigger, which basically uh, monitors all the logon duration events, all the user logon events. And whenever someone logs on, and the logon process take, take, uh, took more than 60 seconds, it will create an incident. Okay, so that was inexistent in 4.0 as well. The new thing we added is the send mobile push notification option. Okay, so basically what it should do, whenever control detects anyone logging onto your Zen app or Zen desktop farm, and the login process is higher than 60 seconds, you should get an immediate alert. Okay, so I'm going to, to try and demo it right now. Uh, you can, yeah, we'll, we'll try to open a Zen app 6.5 uh, published desktop. Yeah. So in terms of notifications, can you just call an API, like a web -book? So uh, if I get what no. you like push bullet or something that gives alerts on all my devices, you can into that instead of... Well, currently the, 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 the <laughs> yeah, just just a sec. We'll make sure the error server is up and running. Maybe you have to mirror it again from your. <laughs> Did you bought the license? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, I bought it this morning. So hopefully, it's. Uh, it's I did so too, and after that, it didn't work. Yeah. Okay, so this is Eugene's phone. So ignore the weird <laughs> Russian things he has there. Um, <laughs> and, um, sorry about. So hopefully it will work. And what we want to show you is the immediacy of the, the feature, right? So this is the, the slow logon process, right? And uh, hopefully in like a minute after the logon process has ended, you should get an immediate push notification to your iPhone. Okay, so this is the, uh, in a sec we'll see the controller app. Yeah, the user is still on. Yeah, oh, you want, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we show them the, how the controller app looks like. Okay, so it's it's uh it's already available in the Apple Store and yeah. Uh, when you want to delete alerts and you select all, you only delete them. Yeah, that's a known issue. <laughs> you get three three shots with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bug. This is a bug. I'm sorry about that. We're working it. It's it's completely uh, fixed and somewhere in 2016. <laughs> okay, so demo gods, be with us. Uh, yeah. Um, hopefully, in a few, maybe you go back to the home screen. There you go. A new alert is coming. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Ten for you. Okay. So uh, I know you would love to get these kind of alerts when you're at home with the kids and the CEO is logging in. Login duration was slow. Bam, it just pops up on your phone. You can, you know, give him a call saying, sorry about that, we'll fix it. Uh, salary increase, everything, it's all part of the job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. OK, so this is the actual alert. What we'll show you here is obviously the username, the relevant uh, uh, Zen desktop VM or Zenup VM was logging on into. And we'll actually show you which metrics uh, were the main metrics delaying the login process. Okay, in this case, group policy uh, obviously caused most of the delay. Okay, so this is out there, it's available, you can use it. Uh, it's part of the 4.1 uh, 
Uh, C. And the same logic works for uh, computer stress. So uh, if there's a computer undergoing some regular stress, or a user logging on, or a session disconnected, or even a process started, like the next time a user starts an application and you want to get an alert about it, uh, that's also included. Uh, so yeah. Do you say this is also available on the Android? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Can the alerts out of control up? go into like another monitoring solution, so for like through SNMP or something like that. Okay, so if you have another product you want to send those mm -hmm. you can. And Android gets one too. Yeah, that's actually, I, I haven't actually answered him, but this is a similar question. So um, what we have right now, we have an event log alert, right? So when we pick something up, uh, we can create an event log alert in a central server, and it has all the details. And I will not show it to you now because I want to really get to the insights part, but uh, we are actually doing SCOM integration this way. We have a SCOM uh, uh, active alert looking on this, that specific event log, and when it pops up, it just creates a SCOM event, which triggers the whole SCOM uh, uh, you know, alerting mechanism. With their, you know, they have a very full uh, alerting mechanism with uh, SMMP and event logs and emails and whatnot. So you can actually integrate control up with SCOM using the event log follow-up actions. Okay, and then we might do some more APIs uh, down the road. Okay. It's not make it generic, so you just say, add, add, and this is the URL I want to call, these are the parameters yeah. I want to pass, and then you can integrate with anything, right? So what we're planning actually is, is an API, and another custom uh, follow-up action, yeah. which you can do everything you want, right? Just when something happens, run this. So both of them are coming in the, in the next release. Okay, so, uh, so this is about the mobile app. Just before we get to the control up inside, I want to show you one last thing here. So, actually, I think in the first EWVC we sponsored, we, uh, we showed you guys a script based action uh, community thing, right? And the idea was to uh, enable the community to share PowerShell scripts, uh, Citrix related scripts with all the other control up customers. Okay, it, this has been picking up in the last uh, uh, couple of months. Maybe Eugene, you can show them the, uh, the community action uh, uh, section in the product itself. Um, so what we're doing actually, where either us as a vendor or customers can actually create uh, what we call script-based action, and once it's published, all the control customers will see kind of a new, um, you know, a new highlight. There's a new action available. You can go into the script-based action section and download it and use it in your own environment. Okay. So uh, just if you scroll all the way to the app, I can show you one, uh, uh, one new, um, one new community action, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, yeah, the other way around. Oh yeah, in my Mac it's uh, yeah, the get TV right. Oh, this is a great example. Okay, so one of our customers, this is Matthew from Steam from the UK. Um, he was missing a PVS write cache uh, column, right? Because you know these days you can use the in RAM cache uh, uh, write cache type, but when the RAM RAM runs out, uh, it starts overflowing to disk, and then obviously performance uh, uh, is decreasing, and everyone is, is not that happy. So uh, currently we do not have a built-in column for that. So what Matthew did, he wrote a parse script that goes and looks for the, for the non uh, pool page memory right on the server and shows you the size of that uh, uh, metric, which is essentially the size of the RAM cache. So we took his PVS, uh, his PowerShell script, we enhanced it a bit to include also, Andrew, uh, to also include uh, a disk-based write cache, uh, and we published this obviously uh, giving the credit to Matthew. So this is my Zen app 65 farm. Most servers here are actually provisioned, uh, and if you go to, we have quite a few scripts. As you see, yeah, it is just taken off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have quite a few actions available, and if you go and hit the get PVS write cache size, so what you do, it will actually, in the background, it will run the PowerShell script on each, in this case, on each Zen app VM, and it will show you in the output window, but maybe you want to kind of, yeah, uh, yeah zoom into the output window, um, you will see the actual uh, cache size. Right, you can see, for example, TSO2 is currently using uh, 277 megabytes of RAM cache. Right, and obviously the disk uh, cache size is still 4 megabytes because overflow hasn't kicked in. Okay, in my environment, we have 1 gigabyte of RAM configured for each PBS uh, image. If you look on some of the other servers, I think at least some of them are already... Look on TSO4, for example. You can see that it's using... Right, you see that... Uh, oh, okay, still okay, still good. Do we have any server with... a this cache? No. Okay, we're all good. Actually, we booted the server this morning, which makes sense. Yeah? Um, is there any, like, scheduler or anything for running, like, those kind of tasks? So where if you want to run it on a schedule and maybe, like, spit out an alert or based upon a metric that you get back, like, the output? 
So, um, not right now. This has probably been the most popular feature request sure. in the last uh, couple of months. So we're adding that. Okay. 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 <coughs> yes, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that could also, so if you're looking at the, essentially the first one counter for that, then that non place pool can fill up with other stuff in the kernel. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, that's a good point. Have you found any way to... Actually, yes, that's, okay, so what was Jim was asking is, he was saying actually that the non-page pool metric is not the most accurate metric to figure out what's the size of the PVS write cache size, and he's right, okay, because Windows obviously is also using non-page pool memory. So initially when we wrote this, or when Matthew wrote this, we put in a hard-coded, we, we, you know, we, we kind of, uh, uh, we took the metric and we, we uh, dropped like 150 megabytes of memory, because this is what usually Windows servers are doing. But that's not accurate as well, right? So now we found a way with all kinds of crazy page hips. Um, uh, I don't remember the utility name. I can say it to you uh, after the show. Uh, you can actually get the, the real PVS driver non-page uh, memory usage. The thing is, it's a bit intrusive. You have to load the driver, and uh, you might know it also. It's, uh, it's, a bit, um, you know, it's a bit hard to get there. And a simple power script would be too, you know, too simple for that. So we might, you know, make it uh, as we, you know, as we built in into the actual console, we might use the the, the real metric. But for now, I would say it's 90% uh, accurate. So should be okay. So that's pretty much it about 4.1. I know we are kind of running out of time. So again, mobile alerts, uh, log and duration metrics, more of that tomorrow, and and obviously the script-based action which which is picking up. And I think it would be a great uh, in the end a great inventory of Citrix and virtualization related scripts. Okay, so uh, moving on to the last part of our demo. Um, so as I mentioned, we are, at least up until now, we have been totally focusing on real-time management. Okay, everything is real-time, up to the second metrics, management actions, on demand. Um, for various reasons, uh, which were not elaborate because Citrix is here, uh, there is a huge demand for historical reporting for Citrix products. Okay, ever since the old resource manager and EdSite 5.4 was kind of uh, uh, end of life, we're seeing a bigger and bigger demand for a proper historical reporting module which will give you the exact reports you need. Um, you know, not 3,000 reports, only the actual reports any VDI or RDS admin needs. Okay, so we, we decided to, basically what we're doing, we're going to take all the real-time data, everything from the host layer down to the actual processes, put it in a certain database and expose a new web-based dashboard that will show you what's going on from a historical perspective. And we are trying to kind of uh, 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 stay with the same intuitive UI, the easy drill down features, but in a web-based uh, dashboard and again looking at historical data. So this is going to be pretty big. Uh, this is one example of a report. This is the, and yeah, go, yeah, this is great. Okay, so this is one report. This is the user session activity. So we, as you can see in the uh, upper side, we have a few features uh, coming up, like for example, you can go back uh, two hours, a day, a week, a month, a year, right, without any, any fancy platinum licenses, obviously. Um, you can automate reports, okay, so you can uh, obviously send this report to your, uh, you know, your boss uh, once a week, once a month, again, depending on your requirements. Um, and but in the actual data, so this is the session activity, this is, uh, in this case, we're looking at a single day. So it will show me a list of all the user sessions that were working on my farms during this day. Again, we put some data like uh, how long the session was loaded, uh, what was the login duration, and a bunch of other metrics. We'll also have another similar report like this, but without, uh, uh, with actually performance metrics. So you can also see historically which sessions uh, were consuming the item on resources. Okay, now again, trying to keep this intuitive, uh, this is uh, a drill down into one of the sessions. And if you, yeah, if you can make it, a, yeah, that's great. Okay, so this is one session. This is an historical session. And what we're showing you, we're actually trying to show you what was the session behavior during its life cycle. Okay, so first session states. Okay, so it started as an active session. It became idle after like an hour. It was disconnected and then it uh, became active again. Okay, so you can see what was going on during the day. Uh, you can also see which apps these will run. Okay, and also the client information. So you can kind of correlate everything. And if you notice that uh, 
what's supposed to be a blue line, this project projector is not that great as. Um, so if you scroll down a bit, we're actually showing you, in addition to the, to the session states and client info, we're also showing you the metrics. And we are showing two types of metrics during the day. One is the session metrics, right, the blue line there, and the actual computer metrics, what the session is running on. Now this could be a Windows, you know, a, a Zen desktop VM or an RDS host. But this is great because, you know this question for users, you know, yesterday my, my session was slow. Okay, that's, that's uh, really detailed <laughs> information. But now we can go back here and we can immediately see during the, the session lifecycle if any one metric or any one app was causing an issue. Okay, RAM, I.O., CPU, protocol latency, everything is right in your face in a single report. Okay, and this is just an example. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of awesome data. The question is, is, are you guys tapping into things like NV, WMI, anything relating to graphic monitoring, when yeah. GPUs are touched, OpenGL, DirectX, and that type of data so that I can determine if I need a GPU or not, stuff like that? So first, uh, uh, we're not using WMI. We try to avoid that. <laughs> Thank you. You're right, you're right. It's, it sucks. <laughs> um, WMI sucks in so many ways. But yes. um, Oh, okay. Sorry. So we, we're trying to use native APIs whenever we can. Okay. Uh, we currently do not collect any GPU statistics, so this is coming. Uh, probably based on the NVIDIA API drivers. That's the, the plan. Um, we are collecting process data. So everything you're seeing here is essentially being based out of the process data. So we're building from, uh, you know, kind of a bottom uh, Top Pro, so we have everything. Um, currently, no GDI objects, so no GPU objects, so only CPU, memory, I/O, UX metrics. Uh, we are working on extending that. Okay. Um, now, another thing I want to show, and this I have to wrap up because Alex is doing like, uh, like this. Um, okay. So this is the last report I want to show you, and I'm showing you this because it's highlighting one of the uh, one of the big things we're trying to do. Okay. And this is this is big, guys. Um, we're essentially a cloud-based solution. Okay, I'm not sure if all of you know this, but by default, like 90% of our customers are running the console and the agents on premises, but the backend config and, and historical data uh, databases are hosted. Okay, obviously encrypted and all the, the security precautions are in place, but this actually <coughs> enables us to kind of see hundreds of Citrix environments and figure what's, what's, uh, what, you know, what things are going on. And going back to, I think this was Jim or Neil's question, um, what is a good login duration? Is it 10 seconds? Is it 30 seconds? I don't know. So what you're seeing here, this is the login duration report. Um, this is your organization average over the last week. So when everybody logged on, the average was 35 seconds. The benchmark data, this is looking on our entire customer database and saying this is the average based on everyone's data. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is basically in any report, wherever it makes sense, to show you, in addition to what your organization looks like, the global benchmark. And we're starting with performance metrics, and we'll expand also this to best practices configuration, recommended patches, uh, and so on and so forth. So kind of a one-stop shop for uh, what's the current state of affairs with Citrix enterprise environments. I'm just curious, it, it will be a global benchmark where you can compare yourself to other companies? Exactly right. That's a very good idea. Uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Uh, right, so that's, that's pretty much it. Just uh, one last thing. Uh, tomorrow at 9.30, uh, we will be discussing a bit more the Windows login duration, the non-sponsored session, so drop by. I know it's early, uh, but there will be interesting things there. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, guys.